This is a recording of an article on Wikipedia, VJing from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. This recording is current as of Thursday, May 13th, 2010. It was made by the Wikispring team from the Mapping Festival in Geneva in 2010. There are references available in the written form of this article. Please be sure to verify information found on Wikipedia using the references provided on cross ref or sorry or cross referencing the information yourself. The sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0 imported license available at creativecommons.org slash licenses by iPhon SA slash 3.0. VJing. VJing is a broad designation of real-time visual performance. Characteristics of VJing are the creation or manip manipulation of imagery in real time through technological mediation and for an audience, in synchronization to music. VJing often takes place at events such as concerts, nightclubs, music festivals, and sometimes in combination with other performative arts. This results in a live multimedia performance that can include music, actors, and dancers. The term VJing became popular in its association with MTV's visual jockey, but its origins date back to the New, New York club scene by the of the 70s. In both situations, VJing is the manipulation of selected visuals, the same way DJing is a selection of manipulation of audio. One of the key elements of the practice of VJing is the real-time mix of content from a library of media on storage media such as VHS tapes or DVD discs, video and still image files, on computer hard drives, live camera input, or from a computer generated visuals. In addition to the, in addition to the selection of media, VJing mostly implies real-time processing of the visual material. The term is also used to describe the performative use of generative software, although the world becomes dubious since no video is being mixed. VJ history, predecessors of VJing. Historically, VJing gets its references from art forms that deal with the synesthetic experience of vision and sound. These historical references are shared with other live audiovisual art forms, such as live cinema, to include the camera obscura, the panorama and diorama, the magic lantern, color organ, and liquid light shows. The color organ is a mechanism to make colors correspond to sound through mechanical and electromechanic means. Bainbridge Bishop, who contributed to the development of the color organ, was dominated with the idea of painting music. In a book from 1893 that documents his work, Bishop states, I procured an organ and experimented by building an attachment to the keys which would play with different colored lights to correspond with the music of the instrument. Between 1919 and 1927, Mary Hallock Greenwald, a piano soloist, created a new technological art form called Nuratar, which means essence of light in Arabic. Her light music consisted of environmental color fields that produced a scale of light, intensities, and color. In place of a keyboard, the Sarabe had a console with graduated sliders and other controls, more like a modern mixing board. Lights could be adjusted directly via the sliders through the use of a pedal and with toggle switches that worked like individual keys. In clubs and private events in the 1960s, people used liquid slides, disco balls and light projections on smoke 
to give the audience new sensations. Some of these experiments were linked to the music, but most of the time they functioned as decorations. This came to be known as liquid light shows. From 1965 to 1966 in San Francisco, the visual shows by artist collectives such as the Joshua Light Show and the Brotherhood of Light accompanied the Grateful Dead concerts which were inspired by the B generation, in particular the Merry Pranksters and fueled by the expansion of consciousness from the ACID tests. The exploding plastic inevitable between 1966 and 1967, organized by Andy Warhol, contributed to the fusion of music and visuals in a party context. The exploding party project examined the history of the party as an experimental artistic format, focusing in particular on music visualization, also in live contexts. 1970s, important events. During late 70s, video and music performance became more tightly integrated. At concerts, a few bands started to have regular film and video along with their music. Experimental filmmaker Tony Potts was considered an unofficial member of the monochrome set for his work on lighting design and filmmaking for projections for live shows. Test Department initially worked with Burt Turnbull as a resident visual artist creating slideshows and film for live performances. The organization, Ministry of Power, included collaborations with performance groups, traditional choirs, and various political activists. Industrial bands would perform in art contexts, as well as in concert halls, and often with video projections. Groups like Cabaret Voltaire began, started to use low-cost video editing equipment to create their own time-based collages for their sound works. In their words, before the use of video, you had to do collages on paper, but now you present them in rhythm, living time, in video. The film collages made by and for groups such as the Test Department, Throbbing Gristle, and San Francisco's Tuxedo Moon became part of their live shows. An example of mixing film with live performance is that of Public Image Limited at the Ritz Riot in 1981. This club, located on the East 9th Street in New York, had a state-of-the-art video projection system. It was used to show a combination of pre-recorded and live video on the club's screen. Pill played behind this screen with, rear, er, with lights rear-projecting their shadows onto the screen. Expecting a more traditional rock show, the audience reacted by pelting the projection screen with beer bottles and eventually pulling down the screen. Technological developments. With the advent of the first audio synthesizers built by Bell Labs in the 1970s, image synthesizing was not far behind. An artist retreat in Owego, New York, called the Experimental Television Center, founded in 1971, made contributions to the development of many artists by gathering the experimental hardware created by video art pioneers Nam June Paik, Steve Rutt, and Bill Etra, and made the equipment available to artists in an inviting setting for free experimentation. Many of the outcomes debuted at the nightclub Hurrah, which quickly became a new alternative for video artists who could not get their avant-garde productions aired on regular broadcast outlets. Similarly, music video development was happening in other major cities around the world, providing an alternative to mainstream television. A notable image processor is a Sandin image processor, made in 1971, primarily as it describes what is now commonly referred to as open source. Begin quote. The Dan Sandin Image Processor, or IP, is an analog video processor with video signals sent through the processing modules that route to an output color encoder. The IP's most unique attribute is its non-commercial philosophy, emphasizing a public access to processing methods and the machines that assist in generating the images. The IP was Sandin's electronic experiment for a culture that would learn to use high-tech machines for personal, aesthetic, religious, intuitive, comprehensive, and exploratory growth. This educational goal was supplemented with a distribution religion that enabled video artists and not-for-profit groups to roll your own video with synthesizer for only the cost of the parts and the sweat and labor it took to build it. It was the Heath Kit of video art tools with a full building plan spelled out, including electronic schematics and mechanical assembly information. Tips on soldering, procuring electronic parts, and printed circuit boards were also included in the documentation, increasing the chances of successfully building a working version of the video synthesizer." End quote. 1980s. 
important events. The rise of electronic music, especially in a house and techno genre, and DJ clubs culture provided more opportunities for artists to create live visuals at events. The popularity of MTV led to greater and better production of music videos for both broadcast and VHS, and many clubs began to show music videos as part of entertainment and atmosphere. Joe Shanahan, owner of Metro in 1989 to 1999, was paying artists for video content on VHS. Part of the evening, they would play MTV music videos, and part of the evening, they would run mixes from local artists Shanahan had commissioned. Medusas, an all-ages band in Chicago, incorporated visuals as part of their nightly art performances throughout the early to mid-80s, 1983 to 85. Also in Chicago during the mid-80s was Smart Bar where, where Metro held Video Metro every Saturday night. Technological developments. In the 1980s, the development of relatively cheap transistors and integrated circuit technology allowed the development of digital video effects hardware at the price with reach of individual VJs and nightclub owners. One of the first commercially distributed video synthesizers available in 1981 was the CEL, CEL Electronics Chromoscope, sold for use in the, develop, in the developing nightclub scene. The Fairlight Computer Video Instrument, CVI, first produced in 1983, was revolutionary in this area, allowing complex digital effects to be applied in real time to video sources. The CVI became popular amongst television and music video producers and, features, and features in a number of music videos from that period. The Commodore Amiga introduced the 1985 made a breakthrough in accessibility for home computers and developed the first computer animation programs for 2D and 3D animation that could produce broadcast results on a desktop computer. 1990s, important events. A number of recorded works begin to be published in the 1990s to further distribute the work of VJs such as the X-Mix compilations beginning in 1993, Future Sound of London's Live Forms, VHS 1994, Emergency Broadcast Network's Telecommunication Breakdown, VHS 1995, Cold Cut and Hextatic's Timber, VHS 1997, and then later on CD-ROM, including a copy of VJAM, VJ Software, and the Mego Videos compilation of works from 1996-1998, VHS PAL 1999. Also of note is the CD release of Jean-Michel Jarre Odyssey through O2 that came with a copy of the Air Chaos software, 1998. Emergency Broadcast Network were an influential group who produced both video and audio and performed as an audiovisual act. In the United States, the emergence of the rave scene is perhaps to be credited for the shift of the VJ scene from nightclubs into underground parties. From around 1991 until 94, Mark Zero would do film loops at Chicago raves and house parties. One of the earliest large-scale Chicago raves was Massive New Year's Eve Revolution in 1993, produced by Milwaukee's Drop Bass Network. It was a notable event as it featured the Optique VidTech OVT VJs on the bill. This event was followed by Psychosis, held on 3rd April 1993 and headlined by Psychic TV, with visuals by OVT. In San Francisco, Dimension 7 were a VJ collective working the early West Coast rave scene. Between 1996 and 1998, Dimension 7 took projectors and lasers to the Burning Man Festival, creating immersive video installations 
on the Black Rock Desert. In the UK, groups such as the Light Surgeons were transforming clubs and rave events by combining the old techniques of liquid light shows with layers of slide, film and video projections. Another collective, Hex, were working across a wide range of media, from computer games to art exhibitions. The group pioneered many new media hybrids, including live audiovisual jamming, computer-generated audio performances, and interactive collaborative instruments. This was the start of a trend which continues today, with many VJs working beyond the club and dance party scene in areas such as installation art. The Japanese book VJ2000, Daisabura Harada, 1999, marked one of the earliest publications dedicated to discussing the practices of VJs. 1990s technological developments. The combination of the emerging rave scene, along with the slightly more affordable video technology for home entertainment systems, brought consumer products to become more widely used in artistic production. However, the costs for these new types of video equipment were still high enough to be prohibitive for many artists. There are four main factors that led to the proliferation of the VJ scene in the 2000s. Affordable and faster laptops, the release of the Ederol V4 four-channel video mixer in 2001, and drop in prices of video projectors, especially after the dot-com bus where companies were loading off all their goods on Craigslist. The emergence of the strong rave scenes and the growth of the club culture internationally. As a result of these, the VJ scene saw an explosion of new artists and styles. These conditions also facilitated a sudden emergence of a less visible but nonetheless strong movement of artists who were creating algorithmic generative visuals. This decade saw video technology shift from being strictly for professional film and television studios to being accessible for the prosumer market, e.g. the wedding industry, church presentations, low-budget films, and community television productions. These mixers were quickly adopted by VJs as the core component of their performance setups. This is similar to the release of the Technics 1200 turntables, which were marketed towards homeowners desiring a more advanced home entertainment system, but were then appropriated by musicians and music enthusiasts for experimentation. Initially, video mixers were used to mix pre-prepared video from VHS players and live camera sources, and later to add the new computer software outputs to their mix. The 90s saw the development of a number of digital video mixers such as Panasonic's WJMX50, WJMX12, and the Videonics MX1. In 1998, Roland and NRL released the V5 Video Canvas, which was a hybrid device featuring solid-state storage as still images combined with the basic video mixer. The V5 marked an important transition point where large music corporations saw an emerging market for new video performance hardware. The products that followed the V5 have become the mainstay of VJ hardware setups. Early desktop editing systems, such as the new tech video toaster for the Amiga computer, were quickly put to use by VJs seeking to create visuals for the emerging rave scene, while software developers began to develop systems specifically designed for live visuals, such as O Wonder's Bitbopper. The first known v software for VJs was Vujak, created in 1992 and written for the Mac by EBN artist Brian Kane for use by the video art group he was part of, Emergency Broadcast Network. By the late 90s, there were several PC-based VJing software available, including generative visuals programs such as Moonster, Aestis, and Advanced Visualization Studio, as well as video clip players such as Motion Dive, Archaos, and VJAM. Programming environments such as Max MSP, Macromedia Director, and later Quartz Composer started to become used by themselves and also to create VJing programs like VDMX. These new software products and the dramatic increases in computer processing power over the decade meant that VJs were now regularly taking computers to gigs. There is an image with this section and the caption is the Videonics MX1 Video Mixer. 2000s. Important events. The new century has brought new dynamics to the practice of visual performance. To be a VJ previously had largely meant a process of self-invention in, iso in isolation from others. The term wasn't widely known. Then, through the rise of internet adoption, having access to other practitioners very became the norm, and virtual communities quickly formed. 
the sense of collective then translated from the virtual world onto physical spaces. This becomes apparent through the numerous festivals that emerge all over Europe with strong focus on VJ. The VDA festival in Barcelona ran from 2000 to 2005. AVID, clear in its inception and the online community of vjcentral.com, self-organizing a physical presence had its first, first festival in Leeds 2002, followed by Chicago 2003, Brighton 2003, San Francisco 2004, and Birmingham 2005. 320 plus 240 in Croatia 2003, Contact Europe in Berlin 2000, 2003, in 2003, the Finnish Media Art Festival Pixel Lake was dedicated to the topic of VJing, while in 2003, Berlin's Chaos Communication Club started a collaboration with Avid organizers that featured VJ camps and Congress stand st strands. The Mutec Festival 2000 to present in Montreal regularly featured VJs alongside experimental sound art performances and later the Electra Festival 2008 to present, also emerged in Montreal and featured many VJ performances. In Perth, Australia, the Bite Me Festival 2009 showed the work of many VJs from the Pacific Rim area alongside new media theorists and design practitioners. Two festivals entirely dedicated to VJing, Mapping Festival in Geneva and Visionary in Paris, held their first edition in 2005. As these festivals emerged that prominently featured VJs as headline acts or the entire focus of the festival, the rave festival scene also began to regularly include VJs in their main stage lineups with varying degrees of prominence. With less funding, the US scene has been host the most workshops and saloons than festivals. Between 2000 to 2006, Grant Davis, VJ Culture and John Schwark from Dimension 7 produced Video Salon, a regular monthly gathering significant in helping establish and educate a strong VJ community in San Francisco and attended by VJs across California and the United States. In addition, they produced an annual video riot 2003 to 2005 as a political statement following the Rave Act, reducing Americans' vulnerability to ecstasy act of 2003, a display of dissatisfaction by the re-election of George W. Bush in 2004 and in defiance of a San Francisco city ordinance limiting public gatherings in 2005. Several VJ battles and competitions began to emerge during this time period, such as Video Salon Seagraph VJ Battle in San, Francisco, San Diego 2003, Video Cakes AV Deathmatch Series in Toronto 2006, and the VJ Contexts at the Mapping Festival in Geneva 2010. This worked much like a traditional VJ DJ battle where VJs would be given a set amount of time to show off their best mixes and were judged according to several criteria by a panel of churches. Databases of visual content and promotional documentation became available on DVD formats and online through personal websites and through large databases such as the Prelinger Archives on archive.org. Many VJs became releasing digital video loop sets on various websites under public domain or creative commons, licensing for other VJs to use in their mixes, such as Tom Bassford's Design of Signage Collection 2006, 
Analog Recycling, 79 VJ Loops 2006, and VJ Zoos Vintage Fairlight Clips 2007. Promotion and content-based DVDs began to emerge, such as the works of Mix Masters 2000 to 2005, Light Rhythm Visuals 2003, Vis Visomat Inc. 2002, and Pix Disc, all of which focused on visual creators, visual styles, and techniques. These were the later followed by No TV, Atmospherics, and other labels. VJ Solo, aka Mia Makela, also curated a DVD for Mediatheca of Caixa Forum called Live Cinema in 2007, focusing on the emerging sister practice of live cinema. Individual VJs and collectives also published DVDs and CD-ROMs of their work, including Eclectic Methods Spotleg Video Mix 2002 and Eclectic Methods Were Not VJs 2005, as well as iWash DVD 2 2004 and their DVD 3 2008. Books reflecting on the history, technical aspects and theoretical issues began to appear, such as VJ Audiovisual Art and VJ Culture, Michael Faulkner and Diffuse 2006, VJ Arts Technology of Live Audio Video, Sarin Eskandar, Editor 2006, and VJ Live Cinema Unraveled, Tim Jagger 2006. The subject of VJ DJ collaboration also started to become a subject of interest for those studi studying in the field of academic human computer interaction, HCI. Technological developments in the 2000s. The availability and affordability of new consumer level technology allowed many more people to get involved into VJing. The dramatic increase in computer processing power that became available facilitated more compact yet often more complex setups, sometimes allowing VJs to bypass using a video mixer, using powerful computers running VJ software to control their mixing instead. However, many VJs continue to use video mixers with multiple sources, which allows flexibility for a wide range of input devices and a level of security against computer crashes or slowdowns in video playback due to overloading the CPU of computers due to the demanding nature of real-time video processing. In 2001, Roland Edirol released the V4 video mixer, a popular video mixer designed specifically for VJing. It features MIDI control to enable integration with digital music equipment and quickly became adopted as a standard VJ mixer. Other companies, Korg and Pioneer for example, following the success of the V4, launched visual mixers as well. The Edirol V8 came out in 2008. Today's VJs have a wide choice of off-the-shelf hardware products covering every aspect of visuals performance, including video sample playback, Korg Captivator, real-time video effects, Korg and Trancer, Motion Dive Tokyo, Livid Instruments, and 3D Visual Generation, Edirol CG8. The widespread use of DVDs gave initiative for scratchable DVD players, Pioneer DVG X1 and Pioneer DVG 1000. Many new models of MIDI controllers became available during the 2000s, which allow VJs to use controllers based on physical knobs, dials, and sliders, rather than interact primarily with the mouse keyboard computer interface. There are also many VJs working with experimental approaches to working with live video. Open source graphical programming environments, such as Pure Data, are often used to create custom software interfaces for performances or to connect experimental devices to their computer for processing live data. For example, the IBVA EEG reading brainwave unit the Arduino microprocessor, or circuit bending children's toys. The second half of this decade also saw a dramatic increase in display configurations being deployed, including widescreen canvases, multiple projections, and video mapped onto the architectural form. This shift has been underlined by the transition from broadcast-based technology, 
fixed until this decade firmly in the 4 by 3 aspect ratio specifications NTSC and PAL to computer industry technology where the varied needs of office presentation, immersive gaming and corporate video presentation have led to diversity and abundance in methods of output compared to the 640 by 480 fixed format of NTSC PAL a contemporary laptop using DVI can output a great variety of resolutions up to 250 pixels wide and in conjunction with the Matrox triple head to go can feed three different displays with an image coordinated across them all. Common technical setups. A significant aspect of VJANG is the use of technology, be it the reappropriation of existing technologies meant for other fields or the creation of new and specific ones for the purpose of live performance. The advent of video is a defining moment for the formation of the VJ video jockey. Often using a video mixer, VJs blend <coughs> and superimpose various video sources into a live motion composition. In recent years, electronic musical instrument makers have begun to make specialty equipment for VJing. VJing developed initially by performers using video hardware such as video cameras, video decks, and monitors to transmit improvised performances with live input from cameras and even broadcast TV mixed with pre-recorded elements. This tradition lives on with many VJs using a wide range of hardware and software available commercially or custom made for and by the VJs. VJ hardware can be split into categories. Source, hardware generates a video picture which can be manipulated by the VJ, for example, video cameras and video synthesizers. Playback hardware, plays back an existing video stream from disc or tape, base storage mediums, for example, the VHS tape players and DVD players. Mixing hardware allows the combining of multiple streams of video, for example, a video mixer or computer utilizing VJ software. Effects hardware allows for the adding of special effects to the video stream, example, color correction units. Output hardware is for displaying the video signal, for example, a video projector, LED wall, or plasma screen. There are many types of software a VJ may use in their work. Traditional l &E production tools such as Adobe Premiere, After Effects, and Apple's Final Cut Pro are often used for content for video show or for VJ shows. Specialist performance software is, is used by VJs to play back and manipulate video in real time. VJ performance software is highly diverse. Many applications are developed by VJs themselves specifically to suit their own performance style. Graphical programming environments such as Max MSP Jitter, VVVV, Isadora, and Pure Data have developed to facilitate rapid development of such custom software without needing years of coding experience. Small companies producing dedicated VJ software such as Modulate, Resolume, VGM, VDMX, or Grand VJ or Chaos give VJs a sophisticated interface for real-time processing of multiple layers of video clips combined with live camera inputs, giving VJs a complete off-the-shelf solution so that they can simply load in the content and perform. An open source video pro effects plugin architecture called FreeFrame has been developing to allow sharing of real time video effects plugins between VJ softwares. Research and reflective thinking. Several research projects have been dedicated to the documentation and study of VJing from the ref reflective and theoretical point of view. In the Netherlands Media Art Institute, Montevideo Time Based Arts, Annette Decker organized a research on the subject called VJ Culture, a State of Flux. Decker, Decker wrote widely on the history of VJing and its contextualization within the club culture. In the same year, 2005, VJ Theory began, publish, began publishing texts written by practitioners and academics and organizing collective discussions online and offline around subjects related to VJing and audiovisual performative practices. Between 2005 and 2006, several books were published with interviews showcasing works and related artists providing an overview of the content practice. Roundtables, talks, presentations, and discussions are a part of festivals and conferences related to new media art, 
such as ISEA and ORC Electronica, for example, as well as specifically related to VCHANG, as is the case of Mapping Festival. Exchange of ideas through dialogue contributed to the shift of the discussion from issues related to the practice, sorry, to the practicalities of production to more complex ideas and to the process and the concept. Subjects related to VCHANG are, but not exclusively, identity and persona, individual and collective, the moment as art, audience, participation, authorship, networks, collaboration, and narrative. Through collaborative projects, visual live performance shift to a field of interdisciplinary practices. Periodical publications, online and printed, launched special issues on VCHANG. This is the case of a minima printed magazine with a special issue on live cinema, which features works by VJs and Vague Terrain, an online new media journal with the issue The Rise of the VJ. This is the end of the article VJing on Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. The sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0 unported license available at creativecommons.org slash licenses slash by hyphen IFENSA slash 3.0.